welcome to the audio version of Exeter Life, a column about the people, places, and events that comprise life in Exeter, New Hampshire. I'm Lara Bricker, and Exeter also happens to be my chosen hometown. I've lived here since 1998 and written the Exeter Life column since 2013. It's now 2020, and I've added an audio version of my column. Along with the audio version of the column, I'm adding special bonus Exeter Voices episodes from time to time. Today, I'm bringing you the first one of those. During the pandemic, there's been a lot of discussion in our Exeter Community Forum on Facebook. Some good, some bad, and some really interesting, like the discussion about urban legends and stories and mysteries in Exeter that sprung up a while back. One of those was about whether the Adams family was actually filmed in Exeter at the Moses Kent House, which sits at the corner of Linden and Front Street. So I went to the expert of all of these things, Barbara Rimkunas, the curator of the Exeter Historical Society. But I have to say, so this house in question, the Moses Kent House, always has had, like, it's one of those houses that you don't sometimes see because there's a lot of, it's on a corner of this very busy, awful intersection. But there's there's a lot of shrubbery and sort of natural sort of border on the front of it. But when you do peek in, mm-hmm. it does have a sort of creepy sort of appearance. Well, it's creepy as defined by society in later years. It, it certainly wasn't creepy when it was built. Who's, whose house was this and what kind of house is it that gives it that creepy sort of appearance? All right. The house was built in 1868 by a wool merchant uh, named Henry Clay Moses. And so he built it simply because he had you know, worked up his business. He had become quite prosperous. And so he was going to set up a big, elegant house in a, in a rather, you know, nice part of town. The type of architecture is called French Second Empire. It's named for Napoleon III, Second Empire in France. And it's, it's particularly notable because it has a big mansard roof. It frequently has a kind of a cupola. And the cupola is this squared off thing. It's dark on the top and it has windows. A lot of people describe these houses as Gothic, although they don't fit mm-hmm. into the Gothic architectural style. So, but that's, you know, we're getting in the weeds there. Anyway, in 1868, it was built by Henry Clay Moses. And at roughly the same time, there was another second empire building built in town, the Robinson Female Seminary, which oh. became our girls' middle school. We, today we call it middle school and high school. And then later just a high school. But we had this other big building that was going up at the same time. So the the resources on what people thought of it at the time are are a bit sparse. Um, The uh, Exeter newsletter described it as elegant. So there was nobody describing it as creepy in any way. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Moses' family eventually sells it in 1901 to the Kent family. They were the owners and operators of the Exeter Manufacturing Company which was our big cotton mill in town. So it's always been sort of a wealthy industrialist who's owned the house. Today it's owned privately. Yeah. um, By, you know, it's it's been sold over the years, most recently in the 2000s, I think. It changed hands again. So so there's nothing particularly unusual about the house other than its architectural style, because there's only a couple of buildings in town like that with a mansard roof. Well, this one, I mean, I know it's like you said, people like incorrectly identify it as Gothic. Like when I see this house and I look at it, I'm like, this is the perfect setting for a murder mystery (laughs) to occur. (laughs) Like literally, if someone's going to get killed in town in some sort of a cozy murder mystery, it's going to be in that house. I mean, do you you feel like that when you look at it, Barbara, or are you seeing history? Well, I think I think we've gotten used to that idea because that type of house has been used mostly by the movies to portray, uh, you know, you know, murder mysteries or creepy happenings. I'm trying to remember the Alfred Hitchcock movie that they use a house like that. Okay, yes, it's the house in Psycho, so it's similar to that, and it, that one's on the top of a big hill, and he has to climb up to it. I think that one's also a Second Empire house. But then in 1964, there were two TV shows that were made: uh, The Adams Family and The Munsters. And The Adams Family series was based on Charles Adams drawings of his uh, quirky family and he always he drew these cartoons in the New Yorker magazine and he had his Adams family living in an old Second Empire house 
And he was based, I think, in New York, Connecticut area, so it must be somewhere in that region. But the two series both came out at the same time. The Munsters and the Adams Family both came out in 64, and they only ran a couple of years until 1966. You know, I was alive at that time, but I do not. Re- I only ever watched them in reruns. Yeah. But it must have been odd to have two such similar shows on yeah. and in the same two seasons of television. And there's only three TV stations back then. So my childhood only had two TV stations. <laughs> right. I can appreciate it. Well, well, you're from the sticks. I know. You know, I was living in Maine, and I well, actually, that time I was living in Connecticut as a kid. So we, we, we had more. We had three TV stations. Ooh. One of them was PBS, which back then had absolutely nothing on it you'd want yeah. to watch. So, so the story begins to evolve because both of these TV series had, had these old Second Empire houses that they used to, to, as, the, as the placement for their families. The Adams Family House is an actual real house in Los Angeles. It's at 21 Chester Place, I guess, is the real house. You can look it up. Oh, so it is not in Exeter, New Hampshire. It is not Exeter, New Hampshire, no. So they use the one in in L.A. because they're filming out in Hollywood. Both these series were filmed out in Hollywood. There is zero reason why someone would travel all the way across to the other side of the country to film the exteriors in Exeter, New Hampshire. Because what you need to know is that almost every town in the region has one of these houses or within a few towns over you can find one of these houses Mm -hmm. they were very very popular style from the 1860s until about 1900 so if you had a wealthy industrialist in your town it's usually new money you're never going to find these with old money family then it's gonna you're going to find one of these houses and exeter was no exception i don't know when the legends began probably you know after the tv series gets filmed but if you Look at a photo from the opening credits of the Adams family or from the opening credits of the Munsters and do a side by side with what has in Exeter is now called the Moses Kent house. They're they're different. Mm-hmm. I mean the yeah. you know, the cupola is different, the the way the house is laid out is different. So there there's no way that they, it could be the same house. So there you have it. A fun urban legend, but just that. A legend, much like the story about Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen building a house by the river in Exeter that went around town about 15 years ago. Thanks so much to Barbara Rimkunas of the Exeter Historical Society for helping us get to the bottom of this in our first ever Local Voices bonus episode of Exeter Life. If you want to connect with me, you can find me online at Laura Bricker Author on Facebook or on Twitter at Laura Bricker. And if you're interested in crime and true crime, you can hear me every week on the podcast Crime Writers On. Meanwhile, I hope you'll listen again to this podcast because I've still got lots of stories to tell about life in Exeter. 